um, I don't know if it complicates things, taking questions during, we can do questions after, but um, this is a bit more kind of just fluid, just a quick whiz through a couple of other photo locations um, and birding locations that I take groups to um, in Europe. Um, so this is um, in Lake Kerkini um, in Northern Greece, um, near um, Thessaloniki. It's about an hour away from Thessaloniki. Um, so we're just where that red pin is up there. It's quite near Bulgaria. In winter, well, actually in spring particularly, there's over maybe 300 or so species of birds, um, 20 or so species of reptile, I think 40 species of mammal, super, super biodiverse. But in winter particularly, it's great for photography because you get Dalmatian pelicans, which although they're there year round, it's mainly um, tail end of December going into mid to late February um, that you get the pelicans following fishermen as they um, try to get an easy meal. Um, and you get incredible light conditions um, like you do here. It's incredible sunrise and sunset and mist and rolling clouds over you know, snow peaked mountains. Um, in the from late February into the breeding season, the pelicans keep away from the boat. Um, they're on these nesting platforms, so usually you know you'll see them a couple of hundred meters away. So if you want to see them really, really close, um, you have to go basically this time of year. They're wonderful birds, just really expressive with these kind of incredible um, haze and quite severe expressions. But um, yeah, the it, it, Lake Kekini is actually an artificial um, man-made reservoir. Um, but yeah, it attracts lots of herons, storks, um, I think some glossy ibis, pygmy cormorant. <laughs> Again, I mean, this this is shot with a GoPro, which basically follow me from Svalbard to Greece. Um, you can get this very, very, very close to these birds, and they're huge. I mean, they have wingspans up to three, I think even three and a half meters, some of them. Um, quite, yeah, when you're on the boat and they're coming that close to you, sometimes they do hit you a little bit. Um, you begin the trip, usually on the shore, feeding the um, um, just any um, fisherman catch them from the shore. And this is a chance to get kind of interesting group compositions. There's about maybe a hundred or so pelicans. Um, the middle pelican out of focus is actually a great white pelican in breeding plumage, slightly kind of rosy pink. And you've got Dalmatian pelicans, um, various stages of maturity or breeding with their red bills or yellow bill on the left. Um, but it's nice to kind of get a bit more kind of um, impressionist um, images of them, as well as the more direct portraits. And then when we set out on the boats, instantly the pelicans are off, flying after our boat, uh, keen for an easy meal. And this is kind of longer lenses, I and mean, I instantly switch to a really, really wide angle lens, like maybe 10 millimeter lens. I mean, people are using their iPhones, as you'll see in a minute. Um, so we throw fish over the boat, um, we'll usually have a couple of kilos of fish in the bucket. Um, and then, yeah, I just hold my camera over the side of the boat with a screen scribbled up to me and then just fire off loads of shots as they squabble over food. And then, again, you can just play around and just eat. Sometimes it's hit and miss, but trying slow shutter just to get a bit more of the frenzy. And you see all sorts of different characters, kind of like the village elders kind of squabbling. Um, Lots of different personalities and different faces um, peeking in. And of course, they're famously big um, beak bill pouches um, with a wide angle or a fisheye lens, greatly exaggerates their um, beak. I quite like this one. <laughs> Getting a shot in the bucket and thinking the pelican on the right was the one doing fishing, and then the Pelican on the left, like, boy, Jerry Nixon was fish. <laughs> There's a great scenario for getting, yeah, dynamic kind of range of portrait and flight and action and more kind of comical or unusual shots. And yeah, as you see there, they do sometimes land on the boat. Um, and this is a chance to get some really interesting portraits. Um, so some of the group, one guy with an iPhone on the right, um, someone else with a wide angle lens. Um, but I usually um, try to get down really, really low. 
oh, I'm actually lying right on the deck of the boat here, um, surrounded by fish. Oh. <laughs> this pelican giving me a bit of a uh, crystal expression, and the other birds just landed behind him, wings outspread. But it's just it, it, it's a great location where you start to kind of think a bit photographically, a bit like a child. It's just like anything could be possible, so you can play around with different perspectives, um, or kind of do a bit more of a. This is just converting black and white later, but a bit more of a studio portraiture style, um, or when its back's turned. I did want one looking into his feet, um, which I might have to do next time I'm there. Maybe an opera singer. Anyway, very, very characterful birds. I and mean, when we return to the shore, the service is in an evening visit. Um, again, I just hang the camera off the back of the boat and get the spray of the water and just play around to let the imagination go wild. And we get them picking up the spray. And this is the um, great white pelican that we saw earlier um, and a longer lens. Um, I use just to pick up on more of the kind of finer details. There's usually, um, I think there's about a hundred or so um, Dalmatian pelicans and maybe half a dozen or so um, great whites in there. But usually they're not really white, but it's more kind of salmon pink. Um, these are less um, photographic. These are more just birding shots just to give you a taste of other birds that we see. So um, <laughs> greater spotted eagles and black stork, really, really common in that habitat. Um, and yeah, we'll often spend the late morning into the mid late afternoon visiting. Um, there's a wetland near Thessaloniki called the Axios Delta wetland, which is really fantastic for uh, flamingos, all sorts of waders like black winged stilts, um, even in winter, um, lots of herons and storks, um, pygmy cormorants. Um, also um, on the banks of the um, lake, you get lesser white fronted geese, um, this is quite sobering, pretty much the world population is that's the white from the geese, all in one photo, um, and a bloody shelled up as well. Um, they're there reliably every winter, but um, I think there are about 60 or so birds. I think the previous winter there were maybe 80, before that there were 100 and something, and it just gets less and less and less every year. And obviously they've just had bird flu there, so I don't know how many there are right now, um, but that's, yeah. And then just a little mosaic of other birds that we target. So uh, alongside herons, woodpeckers are a real favorite for me and a real favorite for people when we go there. So we've got the Syrian woodpecker top left, which is a bit like a great potted, but there's a bit of a break in the black collar. Uh, Gray-headed woodpecker, top middle, uh, middle spotted, top right. And then we've got a long-legged buzzard. Um, so there's a quarry as well outside Thessaloniki where we look for wall creepers and long the buzzard, and also the western rock nut hatch, which is bottom left. Um, got a great spotted eagle in the middle. Cell bunting, um, we get those in the UK, like in Devon, but they're particularly common, uh, almost as common as like house sparrows um, over where, um, over in Lake Hakini. Um, great gray shrike directly below that, that's quite scarce there. And then the somber tit, um, bottom middle, um, one of the more kind of unusual kind of East European um, tit species, but also relatively common in the right habitat. This is on the um, Axios Delta um, Reserve, um, which is a fantastic place for getting water level shots of the greater flamingos and also flybys. Certainly several thousand of these birds. It's um, one of the most important wetlands in um, Europe, certainly in Greece. Um, and you get huge gatherings of um, Pygmy cormorants, these ones are very little with very kind of stunted wings and tails. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a Ramsar site, I think possibly even UNESCO, but it's um, got over 20 different types of habitat within this particular national park. Um, and yeah, over 300 species of bird, 40 species of mammal, 20, 30 species of reptile. Um, and kingfishers are super common. Um, I think in the first 10 minutes, I saw just as many kingfishers, and they're very, very approachable, no need for hide. Um, um, and then from the mammal point of view, actually, um, 
you also get wildcats um, and uh, golden jackal, and these are quite common. So we'll often spend the evening after a pelican trip um, looking for wildcats and jackals and rarely fail to see them. So this location I go to um, every January, but also sometimes in February, and generally with photo photography groups, but a bit more recently with bird watching groups, because there is a lot of potential beyond the pelicans uh, for things like the woodpeckers and wool creepers and lots of birds of prey and storks and herons. Absolutely stunning yeah, photos. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. And I already knew I wanted to go back to Lake Kirkini. I now want to go everywhere else in <laughs> as well. 